welcome to TGWIN's online content. Over the past few months, we've been meeting on Zoom together on Sunday mornings, and obviously the content that is on there, particularly the preaching, will be broadcast on YouTube, as you see now. Um, we trust that you've been enjoying listening to God's Word being preached. And over the next few weeks, we are going to be studying the Holy Spirit, and it's Ben Hodgett who is going to be starting today, and he'll be speaking on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So we look forward to what Ben has to say to us today. We've also got some good news. In two weeks' time, on the 23rd of May, we'll be meeting in person for the first time in Tiguin. So that'll be great. There's a lot more details to, uh, to tell you about, but keep uh, um, looking at the website, keep looking at uh, our social media and our information group to find more information about that. It'd be great to meet each other face-to-face -face again, um, because it's been a long time since this, this COVID, COVID pandemic has been on. But we trust God has been with us, and we know he's been with us throughout the whole, the whole that time have been able to meet online, but God's going to bless us in a new and a fresh way as, as we meet back again in Tiguin. We're just going to pray. Lord, I pray for Ben as he brings your word now. May he speak into every one of our hearts, Lord. If we have gifts, Lord, which are dormant, Lord, we pray, Lord, that it might be by your spirit, Lord, might come again, Lord Father, and you might use us by your Holy Spirit. Lord, if there's some people listening this morning who will perhaps have not received the gifts of the Holy Spirit, I pray, Lord, you might uh, just encourage them today, Lord, to learn from your word, Lord, and allow you, your Holy Spirit, to work through our lives day by day, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, everyone. It's great to be able to, to bring you God's word today, and it's great to be able to be outside in this beautiful weather. I thought I'd come out and bring the word of God to you today, because it's just so amazing, so lovely, and I just felt inspired to come out and share this with you this morning. And today, we're going to be looking at gifts of the Spirit, and today really marks the introduction for the next few weeks, the coming weeks, as we as we explore this topic together, as we explore the significance of the gifts of the Spirit. Because I, I believe that the gifts of the Spirit are something that was so significant, so important to the growth, to the expansion and the power and the influence of the early church, of the church we see in the book of Acts and, and of the whole first and second century. And the growth that was experienced there and the way that the gospel of Jesus Christ was, was reaching those who were lost. And the gifts of the Spirit is so significant. So over the coming weeks, we're going to be giving some time to, to the whys, the whats, the hows of spiritual gifts, exploring some of them in more detail as well. Because we are a Pentecostal church, you know, we're part of the Pentecostal movement. And Brian Campbell last week shared a great message with us about labels and how, you know, it's not good to always have labels. And Pentecostal is kind of one of our labels, isn't it? It's a label that we attribute to ourselves. But as Brian said, the point of a label is to let us know something about what's about what's being labelled. You know, to give us information about what the label is attached to. So if you've got a tin and there's a label on it that says baked beans, inside the tin you'd expect to find baked beans. But if you open that tin and inside you found chopped tomatoes or, or sweet corn or whatever, then you kind of think, well, that's been labelled incorrectly. You think, that's contrary to what the label is telling me. It's contrary to the information that I've been given. And it would be quite confusing. You'd maybe be frustrated even. And it would kind of be disappointing as well. And I wonder if the Pentecostal church as a whole has kind of been like that for some time. I wonder if we have this label of Pentecostal church, but when you take a closer look, when you peel back the label, there's maybe very little expression or experience of Pentecost there at all. And as Brian said, we don't want to be focused on labeling ourselves. We don't want to be attributing a label and making that our goal or anything like that. It's not helpful, it can often be disappointing. But what we do want is to be a body or a family of spirit-filled believers, spirit-empowered believers in Jesus that have a manifestation, an outward expression of the Holy Spirit working within us and upon us. You now, much like there was on the day of Pentecost and the times that followed. Now, I'm not going to talk about Pentecost too much today. There'll be a time for that in a couple of weeks. What I do want to focus on is how the Spirit of God in us and upon us produces miraculous, incredible gifts that are to be used for the glory of God. So what is meant by gifts of the Spirit or spiritual gifts? And that's kind of really a good place to start. What are we talking about? 
Now there are a number of New Testament scriptures we could go to to explore what we're talking about here, what we're, what we're looking at. But before I do, I'd like to highlight something that I feel is really important as we, as we begin this journey into the things of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. So whether we look at 1 Corinthians 12 or whether we look at Romans 12 or 2 Timothy or, or um, 1 Peter or many other different places, Ephesians 4, you know, whenever we look at places that are referring to gifts of the Spirit or spiritual gifts, the word gift is always translated into the Greek, from the Greek word charisma. Charisma, and that's always when it's pertaining to spiritual gifts or gifts of the Spirit. There is another Greek word that is translated as into, into our word gift, and that's kind of a more generic word, a more more used for, say, like a birthday gift. Um, and that would be dorema. Dorema. So you've got charisma and dorema. And both of these words, as I say, can be translated into our word gift. But what I want all of us to understand today is that one of those words is generic. And one of those words is covered in grace. One of those words is generic and one of those words is covered in grace. And when we talk about gifts of the Spirit, the word charisma is used and it means more than just the birthday present more than just a generic gift that someone's given you but it's a gift of grace an undeserved favor that has been given to you that's been put on your life and i love this because it means that when we approach this this topic of spiritual gifts of gifts of the spirit we can approach it without any sense of entitlement we can approach it without any any thought that we deserve this but it's something that's been generously given freely by our God to us. We can approach it with a sense of humility, a sense of wonder and astonishment, and also with a reliance on the one who's given, because it's not anything that we've done to earn this. Freely it's been given to us. Now I've said it many times and before, before, and, and I'll say it again because I, I truly want to see a church that overflows with gratitude and a grateful heart because I think that's what produces true praise and worship in, in, a, in a body of believers. But if God were to give us nothing but our salvation, then that would be enough. If God were to give me nothing but my salvation, that would be enough for me to give him my life, my everything. But the generosity of God is mind-blowing. You know, it's, it's enormous, the generosity of God. It's, he paid the ultimate price so that we may receive the gift of salvation, so that we may receive the gift of peace, the gift of, of freedom and the fullness of joy. We receive all these things. God does so much for us. He's so generous. He's such a giving God. And he keeps on giving and he keeps on providing. And so much of that is simply for, for us and for our benefit and for so that we can maintain our well-being and, and depth of relationship with him. And that's amazing. We have such a generous God, and that's backed up by scripture after scripture. We look at Philippians 4, um, 19, John 3, 16 even, 2 Corinthians 9, Ephesians 1, James 1. Many of the Psalms talk about the generosity of God. And you can go to all of these places. And it talks of the generosity of God. And we all love to receive. Even in the natural, we love to receive a gift. You know, it's great when someone just brings you something that they've picked out and you can get excited and, they, and you go, wow, this person loves me enough to have chosen a gift for me. You know, it's a great experience to receive a gift. A lovely feeling. But I want us to remember what Jesus said and Paul quotes it in, in Acts 20. And he says, it's better to give than to receive. It's better to give than to receive. So although we love to receive and we need to learn to receive well from God and from other people sometimes as well, Jesus says it's better to give than to receive. And that's really crucial when we start to explore the area of spiritual gifts. Because although God gives to us and we receive it, we have to understand that it's better to give out than to, than to receive. So I'll explain that in a second. Because God himself models this beautifully. Because he gives so abundantly all the time so generously and often doesn't receive anything in return but that doesn't stop his generosity and the idea of giving being better than receiving is really important when we look at the gifts of the spirit let me just read from 1 corinthians um, chapter 12 verse 4 it says now there are a variety of gifts but the same spirit there are, there are a variety of ministries but the same lord 
There are varieties of effects, but the same God who works in all persons. But each one is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For the common good. And that's the key phrase for us this morning. We are given this for the common good. You know, from that point, it goes on to to list a number of spiritual gifts. And you can find others through the New Testament as well. Things like wisdom, words of knowledge, prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues, hospitality, administration, leadership, faith, mercy, discernment, giving, uh, miracles, healing. There's And there's more. And there's probably more that aren't even listed in the New Testament. The Spirit gives so generously and moves us so generously. And it's an incredible list and a list that we should aspire to receive something from. As much as we want to receive them, we must understand that they are given for purpose. The spiritual gifts are given for purpose and they're not for us to just keep hold of. No, freely we have received, freely we should give. It's better to give than to receive. Remember what it says at the end of verse 7, these are for the common good. Now we're given our salvation, we're given the Holy Spirit within us and that's the kind of seal of promise of our salvation and we're given the baptism of the Spirit and we see that on the day of Pentecost. And then again we're given from those points, we're given gifts of the Spirit. Any of those mentioned on the previous list But the point is that we're given them for purpose. That it's not for us to keep hold of what we've been given, but to release them for the glory of God and the furthering of the kingdom. You know, and there's two reasons why God gives us these gifts and why we should be releasing them. Because, and neither of them are really directly affecting us. You know, neither of them are for our benefit, really, neither of these reasons. But we will, I believe, be blessed in eternity as we kind of step out in obedience. So firstly, we've we've received these gifts so that we can fulfill effectively the Great Commission that Jesus gave us. We've received these gifts so we can effectively fulfill the Great Commission. You know, the miraculous that we see in the book of Acts, the signs and the wonders, the speaking in tongues, the words of knowledge, the leading, the teaching, all of these things we read about in the early church, these happened so that... Um, as those who loved Jesus stepped out, as those who loved Jesus were baptised in the Spirit and they stepped out in obedience after being given that great commission so that people were saved. So that people were saved, so that the lost were found, so that people were added to the kingdom, so that the gospel was preached. We have to use what God has given us through his Spirit and by his Spirit to be missional, to look outwards, to seek the lost, trusting that our generous God has given you all you need to represent him well in this world and bring people into a place where they too are offered gifts of the Spirit so that the work is replicated and replicated and replicated. And we see more salvations, we see more freedom being brought in, we see more baptism through water but more baptism in the Spirit. Look at Acts 2, 38, I think what it says, and you'll be given the Spirit of God. We've been given so much and that we need to be able to um, give that to other people. Use what's been given to us for the glory of God and to see people saved and to see the lost found. Now the second purpose is for the building up of the church. You know, the church is so full of people and personally I love that. But I've heard people say, you know, church would be perfect if it wasn't for people. And I don't agree with that statement because, you know, I love people and church is people. (laughs) You know, you can't have church without people. Church is not a building, but it's the collective of believers. But I understand what they're saying, you know, because people are are difficult or they can be difficult. People are kind of fickle. People are stroppy. People can get angry. People are broken. You know, all these kind of things. But God desires to bring restoration to all that, to his church, to see his church magnified in this world. He desires to see his love expressed through his church and in, and in his people. So again, through his spirit, God gives generously. He gives so that we may strengthen each other, so that we may encourage each other and, and equip each other to be able to serve effectively in the kingdom of God for the furthering of the kingdom. Now, God uses each one of us. He uses each one of us to 
to move, to speak, to give, to encourage, whatever it might be, but it's for the body. If God gives you prophecy, if God gives you leading, you know, it's not for you, but it's for others. It's for those in the church. So we need to know that our, our gifts that we've received from God, the giving that God has given us, um, comes with a responsibility. It comes with a great sense of responsibility and a great sense of purpose because he's given to us so that we may give to others, so that we may reveal him better. And if we choose to, to sit idle, not using what God has given us, then the church won't flourish. You know, it's not just us that suffer, but other people will suffer if we don't give what God has given us, if what he's calling us into. You know, communities will continue to be lost and, and broken. Churches will continue to be split and divided. There will be no transformation if we don't move in what God has called us to move in. And God has chosen you. And he's chosen to work this way. And I find that incredible. You know, he doesn't give us and then back off. This is important to understand. He doesn't give us a gift and say, off you go. But he's with us always. He will never leave us or forsake us. The Spirit of God resides in us because we are temples of the Spirit. And as we step out, he is alongside us and we rely on him completely. It is not in our strength we do things, but in his strength alone. And to see the fullness of God revealed, we have to step out. And we have to step out in love. And that's a key point when we're talking about gifts of the Spirit and, and moving and manifesting in these gifts. Both within the church family and as we step into the community. I'm just going to read from 1 Corinthians 14. Um, just the very first part of the verse is kind of so significant. It says, pursue love and desire earnestly spiritual gifts then it goes on to talk about prophecy i understand that but it can be talking about any of these things you know desire spiritual gifts desire spiritual gifts but pursue love everything we do should be motivated by the love of god in us we should be rooted and grounded in that love it's so vital and it's so important you now god loves you and he has given so generously to you so much that we simply don't deserve. That's the reality. But he uses us, the broken vessels we are, to reveal his glory and his love and his holiness. Isn't that mind blowing? And he gives in order to make that happen. But we must love as he loves. Loving, loving each other you know, in the house, in the family of God. We need to love each other as brothers and sisters, despite our many faults, despite our many failings and, and annoyances that we have, maybe have with each other. We must love each other so that we can use the gifts God's given us to encourage, to build up, to strengthen. And all these things, we need to do that to, for each other. And allow the Spirit of God, the gifts that the Spirit of God is giving you to, to minister and enable the church to walk in the freedom and the fullness of joy and love that it's supposed to. Now we must love the lost as well. You know, so often it, we can be so distracted with our own lives and with, with things going on in church that we forget the people outside, the people that we're supposed to be called to, the people who need Jesus so desperately. Our hearts should be breaking for them. Our hearts should be breaking for them. We need to see these people as God sees them and be motivate, motivated by that, to step out in the fullness of the Spirit using what he has given to show people Jesus. It's as simple as that. Reveal Jesus to people so that they may receive from him as we have. Remember, freely we've given, freely we receive, sorry, freely we give. Never neglect to love God. In all of this, never neglect to love God. Who is the one who calls us? Who is the one who gives so generously, so abundantly, far beyond what we could ever imagine or understand? He sees something incredible in you. He sees something that's worth investing in. And he invests himself into you. What an amazing privilege that is, to receive from the creator of the heavens and the earth. You know, it's amazing, isn't it? I can sit here today in the beauty of God's creation, looking around me and just be in awe at what God has made. 
and he loves you more than that and he wants to see you released in the power of his spirit it's amazing amazing now you might be listening or, or watching and thinking well God hasn't given me a spiritual gift or maybe you think you haven't got a clue what I'm talking about or maybe you think I have no idea what gift God is going to give me or maybe you've never experienced the manifestation of the Spirit of God moving in you maybe you used to move in the Spirit but you haven't done in some time in some time it could be any of these things maybe it's, it's, maybe you've been so busy that the Spirit of God's laid dormant in your life but I want to encourage you to start by giving thanks instead of just trying to push and seek and, and find a way to, to, to get through this just start by giving thanks sit at the feet of God and just praise him for your salvation praise him that you are secure and that your name is written in heaven and let that thanksgiving and praise turn into worship and in that moment of worship the spirit of God will meet you and he will revive your spirit and he will send the fire to minister to you and from that place you can effectively seek the gifts of the Spirit. Start to pray then for the baptism of the Spirit to just come. Just ask, seek, knock. Keep pursuing it. If it's for the first time or if you need it again, just keep going. You know, we can walk with you in this as well. If this is something you've struggled with, if this is something you desire, whether you've never experienced it or whether you have, but it's, it's your life's maybe gone quiet in the spiritual reach out not just to me to, to any of the leaders to your life group leaders to just a good christian friend you know, reach out and pray together seek god together and see what he's got to say to you see what he wants to release in you and and reveal to you now please just get in touch with someone don't leave it and don't think for one minute that god isn't going to give you something if you ask if you seek if you knock god is generous and he is willing if we are willing to. No, don't neglect what God wants to do in you and through you. Because it's for great purpose. It's for the kingdom of God to be advanced. You know, as we just come to the, come to close this, this time now, this introduction really of spiritual gifts, I hope we, we can really just understand that these gifts have been given to us, have been poured out on us who are so undeserving so that we can approach this this understanding um, in, in such humility in such wonder and amazement at what God has done in us and what God wants to do in you and understanding that these gifts are not given for you but they are given for the church and they are given to you for the lost let's just pray Heavenly Father I just thank you that above all things you are a generous God willing to give in so many miraculous incredible ways and we are so blessed by that we are so blessed by the salvation that you've given us we are so blessed by the spirit of god that lives within us and so lord i give you praise for that this morning and lord it says seek earnestly seek the gifts of the spirit and so we do this morning lord we seek them but not for ourselves we seek them so that we can be released and unlocked for the purposes of god we really we, we seek them so that you can minister through us so that we can see the body of the church built up in an incredible way and so that we can see this community transformed by a mobilized church ministering in the power of your spirit in jesus name amen thanks for listening everyone and i just if you do want to speak to us please get in touch and and reach out god bless you all Come, Holy spirit.